And they both told me, okay, well, Claire, you have to pick one or the other. You can't keep jumping from genre to genre. Mm -hmm. And so I told them, I was like, What's up, everybody? It's Ruben J here. You're listening and watching the Ruben J Show. Head over to youtube.com forward slash multimedia mouth and click subscribe, like this video, and share it with your friends. So that way we can continue to grow. We've had an incredible uh, October and November so far, and it's going to keep getting better. <laughs> it would be a great, great couple of months here, at the last couple of weeks, I should say, uh, until we uh, we take our much needed um but not looking forward to break uh, i'm excited to be back it's ruben j here in the studio i'm excited to be back this week with this great interview with uh an up-and-coming country pop artist uh her name is claire sully we're going to talk about her music influences how she writes her upcoming album and so much more uh, so make sure to stay tuned for that uh but before before I go anywhere, I do just want to say uh, head over to, to multimediamouth.com forward slash Amazon. Um, if the website's working, we've been having some issues with our, our hosting provider that we're working through. So hopefully we'll have it fixed by, um, by the time this episode comes out. Uh, if not, um, then don't head over to Amazon and, and start your grocery shopping. But if you hear this at another time, head over to multimediamouth.com forward slash Amazon, start your grocery shopping. But just as importantly, head over to dollarinthejar.com, dollarinthejar.com, uh, because doing that will actually help us out. It helps the show out. Um, by you subscribing there, you'll get my direct feed, my direct messages, everything that I send directly to the audience, you'll get there. Whether or not you are a paid subscriber or whether or not you are a, a free subscriber, you will get updates. The difference between the paid subscriber and the free subscriber is you get this podcast ad free and a lot of times you get it early and when multimediamouth.com works you'll also get our articles ad free uh, and sometimes early as well so head over there and let's jump into my conversation with claire sully right now all right you're listening to the ruben j show or you're watching it on youtube one of the two if you're not subscribed to either the audio or video or both you are making a mistake. I'm being joined right now uh, by Claire Sully. She is a, an up-and-coming pop country artist whose uh, new EP just dropped. For the record, this is coming out on the 31st of October, so it just came out. Uh, the right? 20th, but yes. Yeah, yeah. So it came out a couple days ago. Uh, as of this dropping, um, that sounds weird. As as of this dropping, I'm not going to do that. As of this episode coming out, uh, Claire, welcome to the Ruben J Show. How are you doing this morning? Thank you. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm excited to have you. Um, I've listened to a little bit of your music, and I'm 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 very curious as to where you've got the inspiration for your sound because as yeah. I was listening, I heard. Uh, a little bit of classic country okay. vocal techniques with some, you know, old school Taylor Swift music yeah. styles with some Carrie Underwood inspiration. So uh, how, tell me a little about your, your musical inspiration and, and how yeah. you crafted the sound that you have. Totally. Um, so my, the inspiration behind my, this, this new record, this pop country record um, kind of comes through with Maddie and Tay. They're a pop duo, pop country duo. Um, and then Kelsey Ballerini, who's like my biggest inspiration. And she she's a pop country as well. Um, but strictly before country, I was a pop artist. And I remember meeting with some label executives and I was telling them, oh, I'm a strictly pop artist, but I'm interested in going the country route. And they both told me, okay, well, Claire, you have to pick one or the other. You can't keep jumping from genre to genre. And so I told them, I was like, well, I would love to do like a blend of both if I could do that. And I was told, yeah, just do what Kelsey does, do what Maddie and Tay do. So this record is really, and really my sound is very inspired by Maddie and Tay, um, by Kelsey Ballerini, a little bit of Dolly Parton. Yeah. So I would, I would definitely say that. Those are great people to, to try to take inspiration from because Maddie and Tay and Kelsey Ballerini are chart topping artists you yeah. know uh i do i do a country countdown show on on sundays and i i see kelsey ballerini consistently on yeah, the countdown chart oh my gosh i just saw her on tour in boston she's just 
her popularity, I think since she's opened up for the Jonas Brothers last year. Yeah. I mean, she's just gained so much exposure and a ton of popularity. Um, so she's really making herself, you know, putting her name out there, which is great. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of it too has to do with, you know, Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. you know, doing the country thing for, for the, for a good chunk of her career. And then all of a sudden going pop, yeah. I think that made it popular. And then I think Kelly Clarkson did kind of the opposite. She was pop right. for a very long time right. and then did country. So I think, I don't know what label executive told you you had to pick one genre and stick with it. I think they were wrong. Yeah. Well, no, just because I was putting out pop singles and then I was also putting country singles so it kind of made it a little confusing for the audience to kind of figure out oh what kind of artist am i mm. so it was either you're a pop artist or you're a country artist and now i consider myself a pop country um just because i kind of slid into that path um of country so yeah absolutely and and so how long have you been uh making music um uh professionally i've been doing this since i was about 17 i'm 23 now um but i've been singing since i was like four or five very cool. That, that's, you know, I, I wish I had a talent like singing that I could say, oh, yeah, I knew that I was good at it when I was four. Like the only thing I was ever good at was talking. And here I am. Uh, there you go. You're using your talent. <laughs> barely. Barely. I don't I don't talk well anymore. Don't speak well anymore. Whatever the phrasing is, I don't do that very well anymore. Um, now, I, I've only listened to a couple of songs off this, this EP, unfortunately. I, full disclosure for anyone listening, I messed up our time uh, time frame. So I thought I had more time to actually like dig into the music. <laughs> no so unfortunately I wasn't able to really dig deep into this, but you know, I, I'm really curious about your songwriting uh, process because you know, as somebody, I, I like to say I'm professionally untalented. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not great at writing. I'm not great at speaking. I'm not great at anything. Uh, so when I have somebody on the show who is, you know, who, who is talented, I like to know about their talent process and the creative process. So tell me like how for you, like how a song comes to, to fruition, because I know there's a lot of different ways to, you know, to write a, write a song. What's, what's the technique that works best for you? So, well, one, I've kind of been a writer my whole life. I've, I always loved English class in high school. I enjoyed it in college. Um, and I was just always very creative as a kid. And so and I also grew up around a lot of music. So I, I when I started songwriting, I, I started at 12 years old. And I get inspired by everything and anything, really. So when, you know, I get an idea, an idea sparks, I'm kind of like, okay, I'll just put it in writing and just see where it kind of goes. Um, and lately, I've been inspired by, you know, I just like every country artist, love, heartbreak, mm. um, the environment that I've been in, I'm very inspired by travel. So that's a reason that I called this song, this album, um, let's move South. Cause I want to move to the South. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's kind of the story behind it, just behind one of the songs, but it's amazing. So you're, you're based in Boston. Yes, I am. Born and raised. Um, actually, no, I was raised in Italy. <laughs> very different. Oh, wow. Milan, Italy. Yeah. Um, my family in Argentina, and my dad's from the Boston area. So here we are. That's a interesting blood bloodline there. <laughs> I know. I know it is. It is. So how does how does a a girl born and raised in Italy with family in Argentina currently <laughs> in Boston discover country music? Uh, do you remember discovering country music for the first time and falling in love with it? You know what's interesting is in the 7th grade I had a teacher who was like Claire, you're going to love country. And I, at the time, I was like, oh, I don't really know. And then I grew up with, you know, like Garth Brooks. That's, that's an artist that my dad and I listened to forever. And I grew up with the Rascal Flats, Taylor Swift, you know. Um, and then I hit high school and I was like listening to country all the time. And I was like, I love this genre. And one of the reasons behind it is because, like I said, I'm a writer, I'm a storyteller. And I think that country music just does a very good job of depicting um, stories and, um, their music like that. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I listen to, um, quite a bit of country again. I, you know, I host a, a country countdown show on Sundays on TNN radio. That's a cheap plug for my, my employer over there. But, uh, you know, I, I like listening to, to country because yeah, like you said, it tells a, a really good story. Yeah, and it's very if, 
Yeah, and, and we, we get a mix. Like I, I feel like you have like the Keith Urbans in the world and the Georgia Florida lines where it's more like you know party and falling in love and okay. and like but then you have um gosh what's his name I, it was just on the, t- the countdown this last weekend but he was telling a story about falling in love with his his his, his wife and continuously being in love with his wife and you know and that to, to me like i i used to say that blake shelton used to write the you know like my love songs to people that i you know had crushes on because they were these stories that were like, okay, I've been there, done that, and I feel right. exactly that way, but right. I'm not as cool as Blake Shelton. Um, I don't know where I was going with that rant. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So you want to move south. Yeah. Where in the south are you wanting to move to? So I would love to make it down to Nashville. I've been mm-hmm. quite a few times, and I'm planning to go in November again just to have a couple meetings with some people, but – I just fell in love with the South. I fell in love with the people, um, you know, the respect that they have down South. Um, and, you know, Nashville is music city and, you know, it's, it's just where I feel like I'm meant to be. Well, whatever you do, don't come to Los Angeles because. Oh, that's where you're at. Yeah. I'm, I'm based in, in the West coast and uh, it is not, it is not a great place to be. I'm so I've, never, I've never been to LA, but LA was on my list for a very long time growing up. And I was like, I want to live in LA. Oh gosh. <laughs> and I still want to visit, which is, which is fun, but. Oh, you come, come and visit, stay in orange County. Okay. Um, it's cleaner and safer. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think if you, if you came and visited LA for like a weekend, uh-huh. and you really went to LA, you would wonder why people want to move to LA because it is, yeah. it, it, it's not what, it, what people think it oh, is in the movie. Right. right. I've heard you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just, just an FYI, but Nashville is a great, is a great town. I've never been, I oh, got plenty, of, I got plenty of friends out there and yeah. it's on the list of places that I want to move to at some point. It's if going into bachelorette party, like a city bachelorette city, everybody's going there for their bachelorette parties. I mean, and I was told that, like the real estate is booming. Everybody's mm-hmm. moving there. So it's kind of like, and the rent is so expensive. So I'm over here like, I'm 23. I want to move. But like, can we bring the prices down a little bit? So, yeah, I think, but, you know, not to bore people with, you know, moving to Nashville, you know, talk, but I think the idea would be to move outside of Nashville. Yeah, you know, it's right. that way it's a little bit cheaper. Right, right, right. Yeah, I agree with that. You know? So with this, with this EP, you have a song in there called Are We More Than Friends? Yeah, are we more than? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or yeah, and the lyric is "Are we more than friends?" and and it's the story of, I'm assuming you and somebody going back and forth, having maybe a flirtatious relationship. So yeah. I need the details. What's his name? <laughs> yeah. So I wrote this song, um, like around the second year of COVID, um, September of 2021, and I had just I I'm not gonna put his name out there, but I had met a I had met a very nice guy, and. I was just noticing our our friendship was turning into something a little bit more just more lively. I don't know. It just felt different. And, you know, he shows up at a couple events of mine to support me. Um, and I was like, you know, I really I want to put this into a song and because I just never figured out if we were more than friends, if we were not. Um and I ended up writing this song with Kelsey Ballerini's former tech, Jeremy Boyle, which was amazing. We bounced off ideas back and forth. We wrote through Zoom. He wrote my bridge. Um, I wrote the verses and chorus. And I kind of would just tell him the backstory. And I would tell him like each week, like, oh, this happened. And he did this. And this is what happened now. So um, we kind of just bounced off of that story. And we made it a song. And I was like, this has to make it on the record. So I'm really, I'm really proud of it. So are you still, are you still friendly with, with the person the song's about? I'm still friends with him. Yeah, I would say so. He, he's kind of distanced himself. <laughs> he's, you know, he's in, he's in school. So I get that. Um, but yeah, no, we're, we're all right. I think we're good. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, that's, that's a good thing that, that at least you guys are still, still He connected. doesn't know songs about him, <laughs> but. We'll he does talk. now. He does now. Oh yeah. <laughs> does, he, does he still randomly show up to events for you? No, fortunately not. Fortunately or unfortunately? Unfortunately not. I know, but I should I should probably tell him. 
And so, so you never shot your shot? I think in a way he like knew that I was into him a little bit, but no, in a way I haven't. Maybe the song will be a way. <laughs> you know what you should do is you should ask him, you should make a music video for the song. Uh-huh. Ask him to play the lead. Uh-huh. And if he's, I love that idea. If he doesn't pick up on that hint, then oh. girl, you just got to leave him behind. He's so clueless. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, there's, there, I mean, us guys, we are extremely clueless. Uh-huh. Like it, it will like my, my girlfriend will be leaning in for a kiss and I'm just sitting there being like, what are you doing? You weirdo. Okay. And she's like, you are so clueless, you know? And I'm like, what, what, what is there something in my teeth? And she's like, no, I want like, kiss me, you idiot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think you should do that. Definitely. Um, I, I will, I will donate to the, uh, the crowdfunding, uh, effort to get this music Perfect. video. <laughs> I got $1. Okay. So with, with this, this EP, you have another song on there called, uh, called Dolly. Yeah. And at first I saw the title and I was like, what is she writing about? Like, this is interesting, you know, cause my dumb brain didn't put two and two together and be like, Oh, she's a country singer. She's singing about Dolly Parton. Tell yeah. me about that song because I'm, I'm curious as to, to the inspiration behind that one. So yeah, Dolly is inspired by me technically because the first lyric of it of it is growing up in a small town. I didn't have much to do. I would rock walk around the block a million times or two. So it is based on my life growing up in a small town. But I also got inspired by Dolly Parton just because. So what she's one out of ten children, if I'm correct, and she comes from a very like poor family. So to kind of watch her become the artist that she has become all of these years and become so successful, coming from, you know, dirt poor, you know, not having literally anybody but her family um, and just seeing how successful she was. I was like, I love Dolly. And this is a huge reason as to why we all really love Dolly. So I was like, I got inspired by her and um, I kind of was like, I want to follow in those footsteps for sure. Are you from a big family as well? Um, so my, my, on my dad's side, he's one out of six. My mom is just her and her brother and I just have a twin sister. So it's just her and I twin sister. I do. Yeah. You guys ever switch places and we did when we were kids, like homeroom class. Oh yeah. People got confused. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. How did that? Well, my sister says so she's got blue eyes. So I'm really surprised that nobody was able to catch that. We've done that maybe two or three times when I was back in Italy. And then we were like, okay, we should stop this because it's confusing all the teachers. <laughs> so yeah, that's incredible though. Yeah, it was fun. We, now we look a little more like sisters, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, her name is Anna. She's got blue eyes. She's fun. She's great. <laughs> I, okay. But I need, I need like, you guys never got caught switching, switching places. No, not really. No, but as, as twins, I think when twins are younger, they really do tend to look identical. I mean, unless you were staring at us like that in the eyes, <laughs> but, but I don't think teachers ever like really did that. I don't know. We might have been like in second grade, second grade. Yeah. But you know, okay. So I, I can see as you get older, you know, features might change a little bit. You know, you guys might dye your hair differently. Right. Uh, you know, obviously at, at some age you guys start probably start dressing differently. Uh-huh, but, but even as a young kid, I would assume that you guys would have slightly different voices and slightly yeah. different personalities. I, yeah, oh, our personalities are very different. She's a little more introverted. I'm a little more extroverted. Um, yeah, we're, we're very different. You know, she wants to go to the career path with like psychology. I mean, like music. So we're very different, but we're also very similar. Yeah, it's, that's, that's so cool. Yeah, cause I, I have a couple of friends who, you know, are twins, but they never uh never actually switch places so and i'm like i'm like waste you didn't want to pull the parent trap thing okay <laughs> yeah it's a wasted opportunity I mean, you know because like it's like the one chance that like oh my you know your sister might be really good at at math and you might be really good at you know just to keep it you know stereotypical yeah. here you know art or something yeah. you know you guys could switch places for the test right right i know we um, you know we're not identical so i think that if they tried that now in high school they knew right off the bat who's on it who's claire yeah Oh, uh, so, that makes yeah. sense. Uh-huh. Interesting. All right, cool. Well, that's, that's good to know, but, uh, yeah. back to, back to the music, you know, get the new record out. Um, mm-hmm. you know, my, my big, big thing, especially with young artists who are trying to make a name for themselves mm-hmm. is, you know, what, what makes you, um, like what inspires you 
to continuously put out music because the music business is not an easy business. It's not an easy business. No, I know. People think it's glamour and, and whatnot, but it's difficult. You have to, you know, it's not like back in the 80s where if you were good, yeah. Yeah. get a record deal. You know, right. now it's like you got to be great and have certain amount of numbers and a certain amount of downloads and a certain amount of this and that before you even have a talk with, with a label who's going to say. Right. right. So um, what keeps you going in this in this day and age? You know, I think instead of you know as it, when i growing up i always saw it as oh i want to do what taylor swift's doing oh i want to do what you know justin bieber's doing and that was just because seeing their glam and glory life it was mm -hmm. like a lot of us could be like well i want to do that whereas if you kind of like lay off of that and be like oh i just kind of want to be an artist be a singer entertainer just because you love the craft and you know love the writing and the performing aspect of it I think that's where you just all that's all you're thinking about, right? So as you're doing that, that's when the connections start flowing. That's when the emails and the calls start coming in. And that's kind of how I saw it, you know, after I hit a specific age. I think after like 15 or 16, I was like, I'm not in this anymore for the glam and the I'm in it because I actually love this. And, you know, I'm very passionate about music, um, very passionate about songwriting and collaborating with people. And since then it's been incredible. So yeah. Now you, you mentioned you, you wrote with uh, Kelsey Ballerini's former tech. Yeah. What was that process like? Because I, I think, again, I'm the most untalented person in the world. If you asked me to write a song, I would probably rewrite the alphabets uh, and not put them in the right order. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, if I had the chance to sit down and write a song with somebody who worked with one of my favorite artists. Mm -hmm. I think I would lose my mind. I think it would yeah. be very difficult for me to focus on writing a song mm -hmm. and I would probably focus more on. So tell me about this person. Tell me how they play. Tell me about this. How was that experience working with somebody who, who works so closely with somebody that you, uh, you know, you look up to as, as an artist? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So funny enough, as weird as this happened, we just connected on Facebook. We kind of like added each other as friends. And then I don't, I think it might've been me. I, I reached out and I was like, oh, like, hey, like, how's it going? Pleasure to connect. Um, and he was like, hey, I'm out in Nashville. If you ever want to write a song, let me know. And I I saw his profile and I was like, former, former like tech to Kelsey Ballerini. And I was like, okay, well, one of the reasons I, I want to write with you is because you're a writer in Nashville. And my big goal was to, um, kind of just get a feel of the writers in Nashville, get a feeling of like, <clears throat> like the co-writers out there and whatnot. So writing with him was just great because we bounced off ideas. We did talk a little bit about like her sound. We talked about, um, you know, her events and kind of how, where I wanted my musical journey to fit in kind of like hers. So mm -hmm. we did talk about that. And then we just bounced off ideas of like how I wanted the song to sound and where I wanted to go with it. So I mean, it was a great process. We did Zoom, like we did Zoom um, meetings every week while he was in Nashville and I was in Boston and we just wrote together and I, we were just so, so proud of the song. So I'm very happy with how it came out. Yeah, it's a, it's a great song. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, are, are there plans to write with him again down, down the line? Are you hoping that's no, I definitely think so. He's a great writer. He's a great writer. And I think that when I'm down in Nashville, I would love to make time to see him and you know, and if I find time, then great. Um, but he's great. I would totally write with him again. Absolutely. Awesome. Now, I like to ask this question because, again, I don't have a body of work like an album or an EP or anything to put out and get people's, you know, responses from. You know, right. I get I get lucky when when people comment on on the podcast. Other than, hey, I heard it, good good show, and I'm like, all right, cool, thanks. Um, what are you hoping that people get from from this particular uh ep mm -hmm. and, and your music in general like like is there like a specific you know I, I feel like a lot of especially female artists tend to have you know some sort of cause or yeah. um mission yeah. with their, their music do you have something like that for your for your own music my thing was like i want to be as honest and as open as I was in my past two records. The first record was called Midnight Emotions and that was written as soon as COVID started. So a lot of artists were kind of 
in their lows, you know, like depressed, anxiety during COVID. And that was that record. Then I wrote a second record kind of on like my love life, my my personal life a little bit. And so this is kind of like me stepping into 23, kind of leaving my pop stuff behind and kind of reinventing myself as a country artist. Um, and I wanted to just start kind of a new era. And I wanted to just write songs that were very vulnerable, very open, very honest. And I think that there's going to be a song on this record that I think everybody's going to relate to. It's going to be, you know, I have songs on there about like my mom. I have a song on there that you could like have a wine night with your girls, um, you know, heartache. So it kind of just brushes a lot of different topics. And I think that a lot of people can relate to at least one of them. So I'm just trying to be super honest and open. Um, cause that's what I said, like I'm a storyteller and I think that this very well wraps up where I'm, where I'm at in my country artist life right now. Awesome. I need a wine, a wine night with my girls. Right. Oh, don't we all <laughs> Just, uh, put on a good rom-com. Yeah. Get a good, a good, uh, good rosé. Oh, I know. Rosé is the way to go. Oh, so good. Um, sounds like fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got any shows coming up? Yeah, so we've got, um, I have a town event, um, October 22nd in Walpole, Massachusetts, where I currently reside. Um, oh, so uh, let's do, starting in November, just because this is coming out, uh, this episode's coming out on the 31st. Okay, awesome. Um, so yeah, other than that event, we have, a, I have a tour coming up. Um, I get back from Nashville about the second week of November. And I have a booking agent who's interested in booking shows for me in Boston, Providence, Connecticut, and New York. We're thinking of starting at Loretta's Bar, which is up in Boston, um, near Fenway, Fenway Park. Um, and yeah, he's got the list for me set up this week. So I'm excited to see where we're going to be starting out. Tell him to get you out to LA so that way you can play some music oh, and yeah. LA. Well, check we'll out Los Angeles. It. Definitely. We got to make it to LA. Awesome. Well, the EP is called uh, Let's Move South. It's yeah. out now. Uh, and go and download it. Uh, where can people find you on, on the internet? Um, I'm all over the internet. I'm all over Instagram, Claire Sully 27 all digital platforms under Claire Sully. And um, yeah, let's connect. Claire Sully, go follow her. Go get her music. Uh, and if you are in the Boston area and you see that she's playing shows, go and support Support your girls, support local music because it is an art form that needs to stay around for a long, long time. Uh, because if there ain't, if there's no local music, there's no reason to to live. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's very well put. <laughs> <laughs> that was very extreme. Uh, Claire Sully, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And that was my conversation with Claire Sully. It was a great one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you uh, head over to your favorite podcast provider and subscribe to this podcast. I also hope that uh, you share this episode with a friend because that's how we grow. That's how this podcast will grow. So make sure to share us with a friend. And last but not least, uh, more important than anything else, uh, head over to Instagram and follow me at the Ruben J and follow the podcast at the Ruben J show. Um, both of those need some love. So head over, give us a like, give us a follow and share us with a friend. Um, and with that, I'm excited for, for next week. Next week's podcast is going to be a good one. Uh, I think it will be the last podcast before we officially go on a Thanksgiving retreat, which means we'll be off for a couple of weeks. Uh, I think we're going to be off for two consecutive Mondays for new content, but we'll have replay episodes available. Um, so, um, but I will know for sure by the time next week's episode airs, whether or not we're taking a full break or we're just taking a one week break or whatever it is. So, um, at the Ruben J on Instagram at the Ruben J show on, on Instagram as well. Uh, but make sure to subscribe because next week, oh my gosh, guys, next week's gonna be incredible. I'm having a conversation with my pastor, Lance cook, and I think it's a great one. So, uh, subscribe and stick around for that. That being said, I'm out. I will chat with you guys next time. Thank you so much.